last episode we degreed the engine finished it up and closed it up like this it is all ready and the owner picked it up and now he's installing it on his engine and his ek and of course now we're gonna do the last piece of the puzzle which is port match the intake manifold onto the pattern we made that's based on the head and also the exhaust modification that we talked about here it is and we're gonna talk about it and do this with you guys so let's go let's go First things first, our new page is up and running because the old page is still up there. That's why this has number two in the SRD Motorsports. That's because I couldn't register a different name. And of course, because I lost moderation control on that because my Facebook account got hacked. And you have the price list here of the basic work like port work, e engine labor and all that. And also we discussed about why some people put pistons without improving anything else and just, you know, suffering pre-ignition and all that even discuss how we get or how to get the proper deck height calculation based on the piston height or compression height of each pistons on the d-series and all the other good stuff so like and follow the page so that you know we can discuss all the stuff that you guys want to talk about feel free to comment there and i'll try to answer as often as i can and as accurately as i can for you guys so i'll see you there so as we finish the engine we actually literally wrapped it up and this way, here's the car of the owner. It was repainted and the engine was brought to us. So now it's done and he got it back and here it is all wrapped up and they're installing it. There you go. So a little bit more of the small things that's missing that's gonna be added so that the engine is complete. So this way we're doing our stuff here. We're doing, we actually did a pattern for the intake gasket before we even ported the head. So when we were porting it, we already had a template just for us to get the port match the intake manifold and of course the head was finished and ported done you can see that in episode two of the series if you're following it. and also we have a dedicated video for porting a d16 z6 po8 head and there's a reason why this has 10,000 views in five months so check it out it'll be in the description below and so we actually cut an intake manifold gasket based on the head because most of the time the intake port flange is smaller than the head itself and so after porting we gotta match it even better and of course because the owner is gonna run a b16 throttle we gotta port match that to the throttle flange of the intake manifold and here it is all inked up with die cam on the port flange this way we can prescribe a line or the pattern based on the intake gasket that's also cut from the cylinder head itself on the port so this way there's a way to actually accurately port match this onto the intake manifold and the throttle. And if this video is good for you or enjoying it, hit the like button as because that means it's, there's more activity and a lot of people are appreciating the video. It helps the algorithm spread it to a wider audience and hit the subscribe button if you haven't and the notification bell. This way, whenever we have new stuff, you get notified and check it out right away. So that's gonna be good. And of course, now, as I mentioned in the community post here, a little bit of commercial. The owner brought this B20 VTEC in as a stock block but we're gonna work on it with the power cans and build it we're gonna do a series and then this we did the cold air months ago for a vti but the owner came back now he wants it fully built with a po8 ported head and all the good stuff so here locally the d16 zac usually gets 125 to 130 with our sparrow on a dyno jet but the b16b owner if you guys remember brought in his d16 a6 and he wants it rebuilt and you know do the good stuff and we're actually gonna do a production class style build on this kind of like a honda challenge version like it's gonna be mostly stock but we're gonna port the head get the headers port the manifold and do all the work and actually dyno test this just for you guys and of course for me so we can develop a little bit better and now of course hit 
the comment section and just let us know on how we're gonna do the series with all three engines we're gonna do a series so we're gonna do it how you guys requested and we, we actually cater it just for you guys and there's actually a fourth engine which is gonna be similar to the production class style rebuild that is gonna be for the boys at Ilo Ilo. we're gonna send it out when it's done so let us know if there's anything specific that you want to check on the certain engines that we're gonna do and we're trying to accommodate you guys on the series all right okay now let's go back to the intake manifold here it is as we were porting it or as we were port matching it you can see the bottom area is left untouched to the last edge that's because when i traced the gasket that we made this pattern from the head it's almost perfect at the bottom so we actually inked the ink the bottom area just to make sure i don't go over it because if you go over it, it's gonna be a bit bigger it's gonna create a ledge into the port which is no good right so here you can see it's actually about six inches deep that we cleaned it up and here you can see on the throttle itself it now is 60 millimeter so yep let me clean this up and let's go back to the work workbench and i can show you better in detail here it is all cleaned up as you can see the bottom part is left untouched when it's near the edge or before it reaches the intake ports on the head that's because when we check the intake gasket that we cut it's almost identical at the bottom but the right side on port number two and some areas at the top it was still far so we actually had to clean that up so that it's ma it matches well and there's a step like half a millimeter step just to promote anti-reversion all right now here on the throttle now it's 60 millimeter right but here let me show you something close Something I do that I haven't really talked about before. And this is something that we do just to promote anti-reversion and just to increase volumetric efficiency or the possibility of it. As you can see here, the last millimeter before the flange itself, it tapers even bigger. So it's 60 millimeter on the throttle, but it tapers out to about 62 or 63 millimeter just to promote a bit of anti-reversion. We left it at carbide finish this way you can see it better but it doesn't really matter if it's finished smooth or not because it's really short and narrow this is a 120 grit finish or sorry no this is 80 grit finish we could do 120 but it doesn't really you know it's it's okay because we actually lubricate this well okay now to describe the, to talk about the anti-reversion thing that we do near the throttle body side or the flange here it is let me show you on the drawing that i made here is a cutaway drawing that i made of the intake manifold and the throttle here you can see you got a port match it right now it's port matched and this is what's usually done but here's what we do we actually expand the initial entry this way it promotes anti-reversion if ever it's needed as you can see here you can see it closer that promotes anti-reversion and if you remember this video here let me show you the visual aid that i did before as the firing order here it goes sucks in air from the intake manifold into the head uh, there's some portions here there's some runners that's not firing the piston is coming up and is actually pushing out some reversion and it's going back to the plenum which is fine it's just don't let it try to get out of the throttle body this is why on some intake manifolds that we see when we disassemble it i'm sure you did some carbon buildup comes up from the head into the runners into the plenum right and the more anti-reversion you can provide on the throttle this will keep stacking pr pressure or actually air on the plenum making it more filled or filled better this way the engine can suck in a good amount of air this is what increases volumetric efficiency at least one of them and here by doing all the small things this way remember this diagram the cold air intake or even any other intake or like a ram air would actually increase the ability to fill up the plenum making the engine run better because the volumetric efficiency on the induction side is getting better and better and of course that's to have to complement it with the exhaust that's going to work well with the whole system right so this is what we do and hey everyone else can actually do something else or like the regular part match that is fine this is not a requirement but we do this and maybe that's why we've built a couple of 12 second street cars that pulls 35 miles per gallon we have to think about that right that's really efficient and it's street car so now let's go to the exhaust all right here we ordered a 2.5 inch flange and pipe 
system with a spring load that this way is a proper exhaust and won't crack and also got the expansion pipe that's from two inches expands to three inches but we're gonna chop it up to onto the 2.5 inch this way it's gonna match well on the pipe flange that we ordered and then the other side the two inches we're gonna chop off the collector of the header this is gonna be two inches to 2.5 expansion and a, a lot of people wonder why we do this and it's actually this actually works really good because if you look at this here in this part if you actually improve the velocity here and then gets gets to exit on the on this section here that's already 2.5 inches that's breathing properly right but that also means the more exit speed that you could do here is going to create scavenging for the rest of the header system and that's good altogether overall now let me show you something that's most often overlooked and here is the high-tech header mostly used by endine you can see here there's an expansion after the two into one collector right here's a different angle you can see it expands from 2.2 to 2.5 inches that is good and even when you check on burns collector here's the 4-1 you can still see there's still a choke and an expansion even if you get two into one collector from burns that's it you can see right and here's a different angle that is good and i've been lucky enough to talk to and be friends with dave stadulis the owner of smsp he's the s in smsp and you can see here the originator of the long tube tri y you can see there's an expansion right there right and this i would hope that people would call this smsp and the copies are smsp copy and not plm copy or 1320 copy because they copied it from smsp so that's the original i mean smsp stopped producing headers but hey at least we got to remember the original or the originator which is smsp dave stadulis okay now here we've chopped it up and actually welded the o2 bung sensor onto the pipe and then just spot welded the extraction or the contraction and the expansion and also the 2.5 so here we drop this here it's the, here it's still two inches and then it expands to 2.5 inches here then it's all the way 2.5 inches altogether it's just spot welded so we taped it up so it looks clean but we're gonna have this teak welded properly and then it's ready to be used on the car on the d16zc that's fully cammed and piston so it's gonna be good here's a different angle you can see that's you can see actually see what we're trying to do here right and it's just the same as we showed you with the high tech and even smsp and even burns collector right and see now we can actually compare it to the local one local fabricated headers this is how it is look at this now this is how it's done locally and you can see there's no actual venturi effect here because there's no contraction or there, there's no uh, narrow section so you're going to need more compression and then when there's more compression you actually need a closer gear ratio because there's no torque compared to this one this is actually going to promote better scavenging and hopefully increase the volumetric efficiency and one of the reasons why we're sharing this is actually we actually do plan to make our own or build our own headers that's why we have a TIG welder we're still you know working on the uh, components and of course the raw materials but we're gonna eventually build our own header and you guys will be the first one to guys to know about all the stuff that we're doing of course it'll include some dyno tests and all that so this is gonna be fun right so basically this is how it is and you can remember here's the engine running a skunk 2 stage 2 cam and p29 pistons that's putting it at 12.78 is to one compression static is going to be running good with the petron blaze and of course once it dynos we're going to make a video for it but for now you gotta click here